What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now with this video, we are getting into the Dark Hold Black Bolt one shot. And we have been covering every single issue of the Dark Hold. So be sure to check out the link in our description as well as the top of our video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this line. Now for the story of Black Bolt, when Blackagar Boltagon was just a child in his mother's womb, he was exposed to Terrigen Mist. This imbued his voice with a devastating destructive power, and he was isolated from inhuman society until he learned to control his abilities. And he emerges just in time to stop his brother Maximus, with Maximus trying to betray the Inhumans to the Kree. But using his power to stop Maximus, it came with a heavy cost. And that cost was his parents' life. Now Maximus, he descended further into darkness and insanity. Reluctantly, Blackagar took his parents' place. He became the flawed but heroic leader of the Inhumans, taking on the title of Black Bolt. Now this is the story as we know it. But when the Black Bolt decided to read from the Dark Hold, we get to see a much different outcome. And so with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this one shot, we are picking up with Black Bolt currently having memory issues. His head with an aching pain, something feeling like lightning going through his mind. Now he can't really remember what is going on, he can't really seem to remember anything at this point. More specifically, he has no idea where he is. But as he looks around at all of the vegetation, he starts to figure out that he is on the moon known as Taros. And with him having the answer to where, now he has to ask how and why. Because right now, the throne for Inhumans, it's since empty, and if Black Bolt doesn't get back soon, he worries that something very bad might happen. And as Black Bolt sits here and tries to get some of his memories back, he gets glimpses of what happened. Picking up earlier at the Royal Palace, Telegar comes up to him in an absolute panic. Telegar being the Royal Physician, letting him know that his brother Maximus that his duty compels him to tell the Majesty that Maximus is planning a coup. And as he thinks about his brother, his brother Maximus, tyrannical, deceitful, very ruthless, forever the single greatest threat to Black Bolt's reign. And the moment the physician spoke his name, he knew this to be true. He knew that Maximus was definitely planning something behind his back, devising some kind of ploy to take over the throne. And he asked the physician for his assistance, saying that he refused to do this, but if he came to him, he surely came to others. But Black Bolt, he has to ask himself, if he was given a warning, then how did he wind up here? How was he betrayed? How could he so easily had stepped into a trap? Now with him traversing this moon, he quickly realizes that there are going to be many threats out here. One of those threats is being a desert kraken. And they know of this because in humans, they don't just execute prisoners. They banish them. The most dangerous of criminals are sent to this moon. And as Black Bolt sits here and battles with this Kraken, letting us know the thing about silence is that when you have been quiet your entire life, when you have been training forever to control your voice and control your abilities, sometimes you forget that you have a voice. And with that, we have a huge power blast coming out of him, turning this Kraken into absolute Swiss cheese. And with the sun rising, with the defeat of the Kraken, he sees the mountaintop, the mountain of survivors, the sole supply point for the entire moon, thinking maybe if there is anybody still loyal to him, there may be a way out of this hell. And so as he makes his journey to the mountain, this is when lightning hits him again, metaphorically speaking, because this is memories coming back to him, where the physician is telling Black Bolt that Maximus, he wanted a surgery, molecular surgery to change his appearance, to make him an exact copy 
of one of his ministers. Not sure which one it would be, he's doing this in an attempt to take power from him. And with the disguise, he would be able to take out Black Bolt and the entire council. Now Black Bolt, he thinks to himself, this is an absolute crazy scheme. Even for Maximus, it is to the extreme. But at the end of the day, Black Bolt is still stuck here on this moon. So while it may be a crazy plan, something about this plan, it went right. And with him trying to do everything he can to focus on just climbing up this mountainside, his head is throbbing because these memories are just flooding back to him. Now Telegar, he had updated the council on the brothers' plot to infiltrate the palace and take out everybody. And if this were true, if Maximus was able to get molecular surgery, that means he could be anybody on the council. And this makes the council all start to panic. This makes them start to all accuse each other without any actual evidence at all. And slowly, one by one, the council is turning on one another, recognizing that this could be part of his plan to divide and conquer the council. Having this information out there, that itself is very damaging. It breaks up the trust of this council itself. But this is when we are told that the science ministry, they have developed something that might be able to help them out here. Something that could prove who is who. Thinking that this technology was going to be the end all be all to this conversation, Black Bolt now looking back feels ashamed that he didn't know better, because he should have. They all should have known better, because even from the earliest of days, Maximus had always been jealous of Black Bolt. Even though he had everything, the one thing that he wanted was the power that Black Bolt has. But at the same time, Black Bolt, he would gladly give that power up to his brother, because he loves him, because he cares about him so much, he would have gladly given that power if it didn't come with such a heavy and great cost. He loves his brother too much to put this curse on him. And so with our council members coming into a room, we're introduced to a machine that can show us somebody's memories. And what it does is shows random memories of all who approach it. And so even if Maximus takes on the appearance of someone in this council, the memory detector will expose them. And so immediately, they have this installed in the palace, all in the hopes of finding out who Maximus is and bringing his coup down to an end. Now on the moon, Black Bolt has made his way atop this mountain. Getting up here, he sees that there are supply bins that have been dropped in. No one being allowed to land on the planet. They airdrop these supply bins in. And looking to appear like they have come recently, there is a good probability that he is going to be stuck here for quite some time. Now inside of these supplies, there is a burial bag. A self-used burial shroud. The idea is that you put yourself inside of it and when you seal it, there is no unsealing it. This is in saying that you are ensuring your fate, saying that you are dead and you are ready to have your body come and picked up. This will signal to the others and let them know to come pick up the body. Now he thinks maybe that he could stay in there long enough, but he worries that he might suffocate before they arrive. And so he rather sit here and just wait, wait for fate to come knocking. And he can't help but think to himself that Maximus, his own brother, did this to him. More than anything, he is thinking about what he is going to have to do once he is finally off of this world. And taken back to a flashback, we see when he was first let out of containment. When Black Bolt came into the world, his brother greeted him. They had such a great love for one another. Or at least by all appearances, that's what it looked like. And Black Bolt thinking back, saying that they could have been a family. They could have had everything in the world. But Maximus's lust for power destroyed any hopes of that ever happening. And with Black Bolt sitting here, looking at the sunrise, this is where he hears a noise. An aircraft comes flying in. Now this aircraft, it is not a supply craft. Having the princely insignia on it, he can only think 
that this is Maximus, possibly coming down here to gloat, or to ensure that he has not escaped yet. Maybe to get a closer look at his new prize animal that he is keeping in this open air prison. Apologizing for what he must do, Black Bolt hollers out, Maximus! And with this power, the ship comes flying down out of the sky. Coming down and having a crash landing, Black Bolt makes his way over there, going in and opening up the cockpit. This is Talagar, not being able to speak to him, thinking to himself, what has he done? But Talagar tells him that he has failed the prince. Wishing that that had been Maximus up there, wishing that he could tell him that none of this was his fault. That he shouldn't be responsible or feeling responsible for what has transpired. That he should have known Maximus would betray them. But Telegard lets us know that once his treachery had been discovered, he was forced to flee. He came to take Black Bolt and get out of here. But that obviously is not going to happen now, because Telegar is now on his deathbed. Now there's a lot that Black Bolt he still doesn't remember yet, but this is where our good physician, he fills in all of the blanks that have been missing so far. Because this, this is not Black Bolt. This is Maximus. Telegar letting him know that they planned this a couple years ago. With Maximus seizing his family, forcing him with threat of death for his entire family if he did not do what he needed to. To help him do this coup all the way until completion. And only then would his family be surrendered. Now he told the real Black Bolt a false version of the overall plot telling him that he would be disguised as one of the ministers. And this was all in the hopes that it would paralyze any of their paranoia. They would, they would start suspecting one another. And because of that, they wouldn't come together to defend the real Black Bolt when the memory machine revealed the truth. Because that, that was the stick in their plan. They had not prepped for that. They had no knowledge of this technology being on the verge of creation. And because of it, it truly did disrupt all of their plans. The years of planning. Although they made the transformation 100% complete. Now he wasn't able to give him flight, but what he was able to do, he was able to give him the voice. Using the mist, it gives him the power that Black Bull has. And so, by most accounts, this looks like a spitting image of the king. Now, learning of this memory detector, they had to be able to fool it. They had to find a way around it. It was necessary to implant false memories to simulate the memories of his brother. And that is why he currently thinks that he is Black Bolt. And he goes on to tell him that he could have refused. He should have known what would happen, that this could have resulted in some kind of madness. So to fool the memory detectors, he had to give him a, an entire lifetime of memories. But he also had to erase all of his memories, all of Maximus's memories. So in a way, he technically killed Maximus, or at least temporarily, saying that the true memories, they will come back one day, but this has never really been done before, so they have no idea when that'll be. It could be days, it could be weeks, it could be years, it could be decades before any of his memories come back. The only issue is, he couldn't fight his instincts to speak. Unlike his brother, he hadn't actually spent a lifetime practicing silence, training his vocal cords, denying the instincts to cry out. And so with one shriek, he nearly brought down the entire laboratory. And with the forces coming descending onto the laboratory, Maximus had been captured. With Telegar barely being able to slip away, the plot comes down to a failure. And with that, we have his dying breath saying he did everything he could to help his prince. And having this knowledge, he has to sit here and think about all of this, contemplating on the ideas, thinking that the coup would not be complete until he believed that he was Black Bolt. Or on the opposite side of that, until he, Black Bolt, believed he was Maximus. Thinking maybe this was the plan all along. Not to steal his identity for himself, but to simply rob him of his own. And so Maximus, 
no longer knowing whether he is himself or he is his brother. All he does know is if he is Maximus, he can never return. And if he is Black Bolt, he cannot stay here. Not knowing who he was or what to do, he takes the time, the only option that is afforded to him by fate right now. He sits here and he waits. As the beacon goes off, with Telegar inside of the body bag. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I gotta say, I really did enjoy this one. I enjoyed this one more than the other ones so far. Now, the ones we have left is Spider-Man and then the Omega. But this Black Bolt story was absolutely a lot of fun. Seeing the what-if situation, not necessarily for Black Bolt, but the what-if situation for Maximus, that he wanted to be his brother so badly, he completely transformed himself into his brother, and essentially completely erasing the entirety of Maximus's identity, with not knowing when or if it will ever come back again. But what he does have now is a new set of powers. With that ringing, the supply ship is going to come down and we can only imagine how the encounter will be when we have brother against brother, Black Bolt against Black Bolt. It's a really unique aspect on having an evil clone. And so the story, it was definitely a lot of fun. I think it was, it was more fun than the Wasp story for sure. I think most people are anticipating and waiting for the, the Spider-Man. I know, at least for me, that's the one I've been waiting for the most of. I was really hoping for more out of this line when it came to the overall story. More than anything, this has just been an opportunity to create what-if scenarios for all of these different heroes that they, you know, probably randomly chose out of a hat. At least that's what it seems like at this point, because I don't really understand why you would put this team together of... of the entire Marvel catalog of characters. Not saying I, I hate it or anything of that nature, but it's just an obvious opportunity to highlight these characters and create a what is scenario that just seems to be the, you know, the talk of the town currently in this, this comic era of 2021. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.